changing of these uh, uh, you know i mean these uh, slides is becoming a difficulty the moment i change the slides either the the sound is going off or the or, or the video is going off that's a, a difficulty and as i told you while we study film this as i told you it is an art form if we study if we are studying poetry uh, uh, which which in a way it is lying us but even then it it gives us uh, what it what can be or what may be uh, similarly the uh, the film though uh, the uh, uh, you know the motion is an illusion the sound is an illusion they tell us what what life is so it is it has a language but there are other you know other ways of uh, uh, you know i mean the ways of interpreting uh, the films films also so there is uh, you know i mean uh, one big school uh, called the semiotic school who says that yes the film does not have a language we use it as a metaphor meaning there is no basic linguistic unit as we as we have words for for literature uh, you know no formal grammar but it it makes a, a, a makes a, a statement like a language because the shots of the shots that we see in a film they they are like words the scenes are the sentences the sequences are are the paragraphs so <clears throat> if we now try to enter into the uh, the language of cinema or we need to sort of uh, try to understand that uh, what are the things that uh, that that is involved in making of a cinema first of all the camera you know how it's how the camera has has evolved we, i won't go into the um, the evolution of the camera from the pinhole camera we today we have these uh, the digital cameras and even the uh, the mobile phones today's uh the many of our uh, films are made by very high powered mobile phones also the the uh, you know the the evolution or uh, the, uh, the evolution of uh, the uh, the of the of the camera is also something of an uh, of an area of interest for uh, all film buffs we need to understand how it has because i won't go into the the development part but you know it is then i have told you the frame movement that i have already explained that that creates the illusion of motion then there is the method of telling a story the narrative you know and when we add emotions we use music in it then there is the cinematography i mean the, the use of camera where we uh, the, there are the uh, questions of camera positions where we where uh, there are different names for camera positions those who are uh, 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 you know good in uh, uh, cinematic are good in using of the camera they know what is a, a mid shot what is a close up so all these are camera movements that creates the illusion of uh, of, uh, of 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 a, of emotions itself i mean that's also something we need to understand the cam uh, the the cinematography then the editing all these are aspects which are part of the film making you can understand that in case of literature for example creating literature or even uh, or painting Uh, uh or uh, uh, you know i mean or or drum so you are muted again you are not audible sir you are unmuted again i think uh, uh okay is it working now Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, please please remind me if I if I go uh, I mean silent because I I'm 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 going on talking but I'm if I'm not aware that it is not you are not being able to hear please remind me. Then uh, Okay okay uh, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, 
you know, I mean, we, we have to know the, the skills of editing. They, we have today, we have these softwares, you know, and, and we have to talk about. Uh, yes. We have to talk about. Uh, sir, you are muted. Sir, you are mute again. Yes, sir, you are muted again. Well, this shouldn't be the case. So, uh, well, uh, the editing, uh, the editing part is is also an important. The sound I have already explained. The color, you know, I mean, the color is something which has come very late in in the in the hundred years of cinema history. I mean, there were uh, people like uh, Eisenstein, for example. We will come to Eisenstein. Eisenstein was was against uh, the use of color and and uh, Chaplin for example the the great uh, the great uh, uh, you know i mean the uh, one of the greatest film uh, film uh, personality he also opposed sound the introduction of sound in cinema or uh, the introduction of color was opposed by eisenstein but Not all. Sir, you are mute again. Sir, you are mute again. Becoming a little bit of a, a problem. Plus, I mean, I, but I, I, I insist that you please let me know when, when I, when it, it is, I'm going mute. So, Sir, I uh, believe that it's not a technical glitch. Someone <laughs> is making you mute through Teams. That is possible. Is that so? Then yes, somebody, sir. Uh, somebody has to. Be a little bit uh, cautious. I mean, find out what is what is going on. So um, you know, I mean, the the sound, as I told you, it's it's also with the way in which the the language is created, uh, and uh, a color, as I told you, it was opposed by Eisenstein, but they he himself used color, uh, and sound. Uh, Chaplin uh, opposed it, but then he himself used sound in his later films. Well, uh, and of course, the latest that you see today's film the animation element. So this has been the evolution of cinema from the very start, uh, say, um, uh, uh, I mean, camera, the pinhole camera was uh, a few hundred years ago, but then the evolution of the, all these, uh, uh, of the cinema movements has been in the last hundred years or so. Well, the next point which I uh, would like to uh, elaborate on, these are the elements. These are, this is part of the film form. These are the elements in which you which the film talks, which which this is the film language. That one is cinematography. Second is the editing aspect. Third is the sound aspect. Then the fourth, the French uh, word uh, mise en scene. Mise en scene is something which I'll explain. Uh, you know, it is the settings, the props, the costume. This is also very important in the in the environment of the film. That's also important. And finally, the narrative. The narrative as we uh, bring it from. Uh, different, uh, uh, different, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the um, literary forms, the dialogue, the characters, the body language, plot structure, theme. So all these are part of the filmmaking. This is an, uh, you know, I mean, integrative process. I mean, all these cinematography, editing, these are own uh, films, own language. The sound is something which is added. The music is added. Then mesocene is something which is, which is, which creates the environment. The narrative is the the dialogue the character the body language the the rest of it and and i will give you uh, some examples of these elements in, 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 in briefly let us see how how we can uh, understand a little bit let us uh, talk about the cinematography when you, when we i'm giving you a one shot a one one example from godfather to uh, if, try to understand a little bit i mean it's just a, a few minutes just one minute or two minutes where you will see i mean the different kind of shots that have been taken i mean the the uh, the element of uh, light and darkness all these are part of the cinematographic understanding you know and what what is the what it it says what is the what is the um, uh, statement that is made with the the different color color situations a uh, different uh, camera positions all this is uh, I mean, part of the that particular in in, in that short video that I uh, give you as an example of cinematography. Let's see. Yeah, just let's uh, let's see. 
just tell me if you are uh, can hear it yes sir willis has said his vision for the godfather was based on evil he saw the dark cinematography as a reflection of the movie's soul the very first shot a close-up announces we're about to see a film the about the depths of darkness the within darkness, the human soul the this slow zoom out zoom develops out. into an over-the-shoulder shot our godfather marlon brando's don vito corleone He's in control, looking down from a position of power, but our vision of him is obscured. The need to emphasize Brando's heavy prosthetic makeup led Willis to light Brando from above. At times, Willis provides minimal eye light, the dark eyes making Vito a mystery. We can never fully understand the man or his motivations because the lighting won't let us. We can't see inside. Michael's face is relatively brightly lit for most of the film, but as he gets mixed up in the family business, his face intermittently slips into the dark as his innocent and villainous sides wrestle to dominate him. Only in the romantic looking Sicilian sections does Michael break away into a softer, subtler light that seems to offer the chance of a carefree, richly colored happiness. But the fantasy of escape is quickly revealed to be an illusion. By the end, the shadows over his eyes signal that his dark has eclipsed his light at last, he has become the new godfather. So you see, uh, I mean, this is this. You have to uh, have some patience and try to understand this element of it's the essentially there are uh, uh, people who say uh, film is just cinematography. I mean, there are ways, and then I'll come to the editing aspect. Then there are people who say film is editing. You know, I mean, there are different schools in in understanding it. But what I need to, uh, you know, understand or uh, make you feel that way is that all these together make the film. I mean, cinematography, there are people who will say it is cinematography that makes the film. It is editing which makes the film or miso scene that makes the film. But nothing seems to be, uh, I mean, uh, uh, it is not, uh, the language is not just one. There are several methods in which, um, you know, I mean, the, uh, uh, the film communicates. So after cinematography, let us come to the the next point, which is which is editing. The a film about Let's the depths see. of. Yeah, the editing. That is the syntax. I mean, like, I mean, the, that's the uh, the grammatical language. If if film has a grammar, then it is editing. You know, I mean, there are different. I mean, broadly speaking, the the American, the Hollywood style is the. Uh, is the uh, the linear editing? I mean, it's a, it's it's the narrative style of editing. I mean, it's the continuity editing. That's what they call. Whereas the the uh, the the Russian the Russian uh, here again um, Eisenstein comes into play. I mean, I'll I'll give you one example from uh, Eisenstein film, the most uh, celebrated one, Battleship Potemkin, to explain what what he meant by montage, you know? I mean, that is a non-linear kind of editing. That is, is goes against the, uh, uh, you know, the Hollywood kind of uh, editing that we see, the continuity editing uh, that was introduced by DJ Blue Griffith. So the, uh, the non-linear editing is uh, the, the montage editing that, that and there were, uh, you know, other, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the, uh, you can say uh, uh, protests or, uh, um, you know, I mean, the uh, movements which which goes against, which spoke against the the montage method. That's the French new French new wave. You know, against the rigid rule book of editing. So these are the different forms. So first of all, let's see the the montage, which is which sits at the base at the base of the editing uh, skills. So let's see what 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 it what this means. The montage. Eisenstein developed his own theory of montage, which contained three methods of montage, metric, rhythmic, tonal, overtonal, and intellectual. The first method of montage is the metric montage, cutting after a set amount of time or frames, regardless of what's happening in the shot. It builds a tempo for the film. Eisenstein used it to show us the conditions of sailors under Tsarist rule. Later, director Darren Arabowski would use metric editing in Requiem for a Dream to represent the immediacy of the effect that a drug has on a character's emotional state. The second method is rhythmic montage, cutting on action in a scene to create a sense of movement. The rhythmic montage gives us one of the most iconic set pieces in all of cinema, the massacre on the Odessa steps. 
Eisenstein cuts rapidly with the marching of soldiers and people fleeing to build pace and visual continuity. William Friedkin used the same technique to ramp up the tension in a car chase in his 1971 film, The French Connection. The third and fourth methods are tonal and overtonal. A tonal montage uses two images with similar emotional or tonal themes to enhance the overall message. When our hero of the rebellion, Vak Yulinchuk, dies, his body is laid to rest by the sea. This is intercut with mourning faces and the sun setting over a harbour to enhance the sense of mourning over a brave rebellion soldier. Overtonal is the combination of metric, rhythmic and tonal montage to create an effect larger than the sum of its parts. Hitchcock cuts from a shot of two lovers sat next to each other to a shot of a train going through a tunnel to represent sex. The fifth and final montage is the intellectual montage. The idea is to take two or more shots or sequences with meanings of their own and combine them to create a new meaning that wasn't present in either of the original shots. Shots of soldiers marching down steps symbolising oppressive force, juxtaposed with unarmed civilians fleeing, shows the helplessness of the Russian people and gives new meaning of the Tsarist forces brutality. Shots of a lion statue may not mean much on their own, but when combined to make it seem like the lion is rising from its sleep, they represent the Russian people waking up and fighting against their government. So you see how, how uh, uh, and there was a time, I mean, the, this Russian uh, idea, uh, uh, Russians introduced, especially Eisenstein, who introduced this uh, montage theme, and that revolutionized uh, filmmaking. And uh, we, we do see in many, various forms, two, um, you know, apparently um, uh, disparate things brought together uh, to, to give a new meaning to, to the scenes. That, that is always used in our uh, today's uh, popular movies also. But that what actually started uh, by, uh, by the Russians. And that is uh, the master uh, of, of, of the montage is Eisenstein. And I showed you the different kinds of montage that was introduced. And uh, as I told you, there are people who believe that film is, the film language is cinematography, nothing else. There are people who just believe that film language is nothing but editing. Editing makes the film. So there are, again, uh, I mean, people who have protested against the method. The one, one person who have uh, protested again and, and has introduced, I mean, um, is, is the, the man called Christian Mays. You know, I would like to introduce to his uh, uh, statements. Eisenstein. Uh, this is important. Uh, we need to understand uh, for understanding, uh, uh, you know, I mean, film, uh, film uh, appreciation. We need to understand uh, uh, what this gentleman, Christian Mays, his his work book, uh, you know, the language of cinema is is a is a classic. But it is the difficult book. But then he challenges the dominance of editing or montage. He says he brings back the the earlier refutes the view that montage is synonymous with cinema itself. The real real events are. Re refracted through an ideological point of view. Another filmmaker like Rosalie, uh, 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 Rosalini, I mean, the Italian filmmaker, he says the things are, why manipulate them? It's, they, they believe that editing is basically manipulating uh, the, uh, the, the, the scenes. That is, I mean, they, they tried to bring back the Hollywood uh, method of, say, the natural narrative of Hollywood. That was what they did. Even the, the French New Wave, the Goddard also, uh, where uh, say uh, they were going against the the uh, the, the usual the uh, the Russian montage uh, me method of making films, you know, and uh, he Christian Mays was introduced the uh, uh, the uh, you can say the the academic method of studying films uh, through uh, say uh, uh, through the semiotic method or which which he introduced the semiotic theory. Uh, stig uh, stigmata, uh, um, uh, syntagma, and, and the parody, the signifier and the signified. Those, those are the things, the terms, which are, um, I mean, very commonly used in understanding uh, films, the film language, through the semiotic method. This is a very academic way of approaching uh, the film. So uh, one has to understand that Christian Mays was a, 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 a character or a, a scholar who introduced, made uh, film study uh, a serious academic exercise, introducing the semiotic method, the signifier and the signified. But remember, 
he spoke against spoke against the the editing method the montage method and wanted to uh, bring back the narrative method and uh, an understanding to the significations or, or uh, i mean the the hidden languages or hidden meanings of in in words as we see in the hidden in images that is what he what he tried to bring in but remember he was possibly the best interpreter of the the editing uh, editing methods let's see the next slide will give you you know i mean uh, meds was best uh, explains uh, montage where he said then in potemkin three different lion statues films this is this is christian meds words own words in potemkin three different lion statues films separately become when placed in sequence a magnificent uh, syntagma uh, the stone animal seems to be rising and supposed to yield an unequivocal symbol of the workers revolt you see the workers revolt is being uh, is being uh, represented or signified through the the rising lion first of all the li lion itself i mean uh, there are three uh, lion st statues which put together uh, uh, seemed that as if the lion is roaring it was sleeping lion it was roaring and at the same time that is uh, signifying the uh, the revolt of the uh, of the uh, uh, the sailors that we see in battleship potemkin -Kin. so i mean possibly this intellectual montage is best explained the man who was uh, i mean speaking against the the montage making or the mo mon uh, uh, you know the montage in films this is what what we need to understand that you never know uh, who who makes uh, the understanding of cinema better i mean the meaning of cinema that is what we uh, what we need to understand that is whether whether it is cinematography i mean the the shots the uh, the the camera uh, or the montage the editing or the mise en scene the props all the theories of visual language the semiotics all of them you know in their way are trying to make uh, make us understand the the feel, uh, meaning of film better so all these languages that we see in cinema they are all uh, i mean put together to make us understand film better so we will go into a, a few more of these examples of uh, like for example mise en scene we have not seen uh, the uh, uh, the mise en scene uh, before so let's let's try to understand uh, the mise en scene a, a little bit Uh, uh, before we go into the next the final uh, 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 sequence translated from french mise en scene means placing on stage a theater term for the process of deciding what to include in the scene and where it should go on the stage very well muted very well muted i mean as somebody said that whether somebody is uh, uh, i mean kind of trying to uh, close the uh, uh, that that mise en scene means hearing... placing on stage yes? a theater term for the process of deciding yes, what to include in the scene and where okay. it should go yes. on the stage yes sir yes, one of the yes, biggest sir. champions yes, of mise en scene was french film critic andre bazan <laughs> bazan divided filmmaking into two basic approaches mise en scene and montage montage filmmakers create meaning from the combination and juxtaposition of multiple images while mise en scène filmmakers concentrate on storytelling in a single image I want I can go to court. A father has a right to. Consider this infamous shot from Citizen Kane. That property is just as much my property as anybody's now that it's valuable. The wide angle and deep focus allows us to see each character and their performance. The blocking, staging and composition shows us who has power and who does not. Sign in my boy away to any bank as guard. I want you to stop all this nonsense. The bank's decision on all matters concerning it. And the uninterrupted take allows us to interpret all of these dynamics ourselves at our own pace without editing 
Traditional definitions of mise-en-scene are limited to everything we can see. But sound design... ...and music... ...can also be crucial pieces to the overall mise-en-scene. Okay, I'm confused. This can be a tricky concept to understand. So here's an analogy. Mise-en-scene can easily be understood as a math problem. Instead of 2 plus 2 equals 4, it's these elements equals one shot. Try to understand there are so many things. You know, one shot has the props, set, set design, costumes, makeup, color, lighting, blocking, framing, music, frame rate, sound, lenses. All this put together is mise And that makes the shot, the uh, one shot. So the, the language of... So you are not audible. So you are not audible. You are not audible. So are you there? Hello. This why is it closing? I mean, this is one thing which I. I'm rather uh, scared. I mean, I hope uh, now you can hear me. Yes, yes, sir. 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 One shot of, of the filmmaking cons consists of so many things. The props, this, this is what, what is called mise en scene. I mean, that is what, what that's why the, uh, there are people who say that mise en scene is filmmaking. Some say, Cinematography is filmmaking. Some say montage is filmmaking. But as I told you, it is all together. The language of the film is a is a, a convergence of all these uh, elements together. Now, before I, uh, I mean, I mean, coming to the end of uh, my, uh, you know, I mean, the, uh, statements. Before I come to the end of it, uh, I need to tell you. Uh, I mean, this. <coughs> also say, Biggest. You know, I mean, when, when you are reading a film, uh, it, it can be, uh, uh, I mean, compared to a written text, I've told you, uh, it, it can be treated as a narrative also. I mean, uh, that is the narrative style. I told you that is the Hollywood uh, style. Uh, I mean, the plot, story, characters, setting, points of view, themes, messages, they are there. I mean, it's not that there is no plot in, in a montage-based film. I mean, the Battleship Portland Kim Fuller also has a, as a story, but then it is uh, the presentation is different. I mean, the uh, bring, bringing together disparate elements uh, and making a, a, a different kind of a meaning. But I will, I have so long given examples from uh, uh, different uh, filmmakers, the, the classic filmmakers of the world. I will now come to explain uh, the narrative style from our own uh, Indian filmmaker, uh, Shotiji Prak. I mean, let us, I mean, I'll give you one, uh, one example. The, uh, and that's a very, yes, have I, uh, are you again uh, not being able to hear me? No, I think uh, you are. No, no, sir. Yes, sir, you are audible. No, sir, we could hear you. We could hear you. We could hear you. We could hear you. Yeah. So yeah. the film narrative, you know, I mean, the, you have to understand uh, with all, uh, uh, I mean, with all uh, uh, Shotiji Tre's admiration for Eisenstein. In fact, he, in his books, he has said uh, several times that he has learned. I mean, making, making these, uh, you know, I mean, you know, Pathir Pachali was, was uh, no script was written initially. It was just uh, these diagrams that he, that he drew for every scene, the scene by scene. Uh, and that is, that is how he made his film. He learned that, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the, the storyboarding, that's what we call the storyboarding from Eisenstein himself. He was a great admirer of Eisenstein. But then his made, uh, method of, uh, uh, I mean, filmmaking is more Hollywood, is more narrative. So if you, you know, try to understand the first sequence, the, the first scene of 
Charu Lata. I've taken the classic film of Charu Lata, and you will understand how how a narrative is made. There is, it's it's just one uh, uh, one uh, uh, you know I mean sequence. I mean uh, I mean there there is uh, I mean no uh, I mean change from one. I mean it's the camera is just on the Charu, and you see how the film has so many uh, uh, you know I mean the, uh, interpretations in the whole thing. You you see uh, a woman who is lonely. She's enjoying, you know, I mean, uh, on one hand, loneliness, and at the same time, trying to explain or trying to understand how distant he is from her husband, you know, I mean, and uh, how she's trying to engage herself in the different, you know, sounds of our of, 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 of surroundings. The, it's a narrative. I mean, it's that is how uh, I mean, Shoti Jitre would like to uh, narrate his films. This is the uh, uh, the, the last uh, uh, the video. Just have a look, and you will be able to understand how a narrative is given. I mean, it's a different narrative from what you saw in Battleship Potemkin. Mm. She tries to sing to herself. Just she's trying to keep herself engaged. You see, the camera is just following her. There is no cut. There is one, just one sequence. That's how a classic way, how a narration, how a narrative is made. It take, takes her glasses, you know, her binoculars. She she's she's just keeping herself in game. She's curious, uh, but then uh, as if she has no work. No, no, no other way of keeping herself in This is the, the curiosity is outside. The different sounds, the different, you uh, know, people, pedestrians walking.
I don't know why this is happening. I think anyone uh, mute. Yeah, somebody mute. is, uh, you know, trying to uh, disturb them. Yeah. See how she's desperately trying to keep herself engaged. A lonely uh, lady uh, trying, and, and you, I mean, the later, I mean, you see uh, the reasons why. There, her husband. He walks past, not even noticing her. husband is so engaged with her, with his books, with his uh, publications and everything, that uh, not, not, he, she, he doesn't even notice that his wife is standing beside him. So and this is classic. You know, I mean, we trying to show, I mean, the, see her husband through the binoculars. I mean, how distant uh, the relationship is. I mean, the way, the language of the film, this is this is narration. There is no, this is a different form. This is not the montage kind of a, a narration. It's a different kind of a narration which you see. And uh, there are, uh, I mean, the, it's the Hollywood pattern uh, in which uh, you, uh, you see um, scene after it's the um, it's the sequential kind of a, of, of a narration. So I will uh, uh, sort of uh, end here. If you have any questions, I mean, this is one uh, one sheet where uh, it describes all the types, the different kinds of films, meso scene, editing, sound, color, lighting, angles, shots, everything. This is part of, um, I mean, how you understand the, the film language or the film theory itself. So I will stop here. If you have any questions, please ask. I hope uh, I made sense. The, uh, Sir, I have a... Yeah, please. So much for such a nice uh, webinar, first of all. We really got to know many things we were not aware of. So I have a question here is that uh, in the time of Satyajit Ray, he had a sketchbook where he used to um, yeah. draw each and every frame. So does yeah. the same technique is applicable in today's arena as well means do today's directors do the same thing to chalk out the frames and the shots well uh, you know i mean it's a very good question uh, you know that's the classic method if you if you are following uh, following the uh, um, uh, the classic method of making a film all these uh, you know i mean all these scenes have to be drawn and given to the editor i mean that is that is how you I mean, even the cinematographer will follow. That's that's the the job of the uh, you can say the director. He draws uh, almost every scene. But that amount of patience, which uh, was uh, was shown by uh, people like Shotujit Ray uh, or Eisenstein or, or or the other filmmakers, that is not seen in today's. That's why uh, many of our films today uh, do not uh, uh, you know I mean have a very tight. Uh, a film plot or or a or a narration. That is the one of the reasons. I mean, that is the ideal way. You know, I mean, if you are making even uh, say if if you are making these short films, 
uh, say an ad, for example, a 30, 30 second ad or, or, a, or a one minute ad, all these, every shot has to be drawn. That's, that's in an advertising agency, they use these uh, methods. In, and you must remember these methods of drawing every shot. Uh, you must remember that uh, uh, Shoti Jitre himself was working in, uh, was an artist in an advertising agency. There also he learned this. And then, and that is what, and he specialized it. And as I told you, his first film, uh, Pathir Pachali, he won him world fame. That was never, uh, all the dialogues and everything were never written, written down. I mean, it were just uh, drawn. And that, and it was just a sheet of, uh, I mean, a collection of these sheet drawings that he, that he had uh, to make the film. And that was m much more scientific, much more ordered. But, uh, I mean, hardly, today's filmmakers hardly do it that way. But the advertising agency still continues this, uh, I mean, method of, uh, you know, drawing every uh, sequence. Got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Any other questions, please? Uh, sir, I have one question that in Shatuji uh, time there uh, we have seen that uh, there is more concentration uh, in these parts. So, but nowadays uh, there is a cutting, um, not giving. Uh, suppose there is not making a film, then again cut, then again started. So there is a yeah. hundred times cutting to making a film, but in that time they were uh, not making a cutting so many times. Yes, yes. I mean, I, I understand what you are aiming at. I mean, that that is another, uh, you know, I mean, um, I mean, moving from one scene to another, that is yes. a, a part of the, the editing method. And uh, uh, there is one scene, then there's a cut and it moves into another scene. So this is this is the more uh, the, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the nonlinear kind of the more uh, the montage method of uh, making films. I mean, it may not be always uh, contradictory uh, scenes put together, but one scene to another different scene that cuts are very frequent in film. Of course, that is that is part of filmmaking. It's not that Sh Sh Kotejitra has not introduced these cuts in his films. In many films, he has introduced uh, these cuts, but he uh, 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 he tends to be a more a uh, 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 more a narrator, and uh, these long sequences are very common in in his films. It, he is. His cuts are, uh, I mean, not as pronounced as other filmmakers today. You know, these this is the, these are different methods or different languages in which the uh, film uh, talks to us or uh, communicates to us. That cut, cut method is more. Uh, I mean, uh, it it originates from the the montage method. Yes. Sir, I guess at that time there was no option of editing in PC or any other things they were like absolutely absolutely they, they it was uh, a different uh, method also today's today it is much easier we have these softwares in which yes. we uh, do the editing whereas in the in actually in, in shotiji today's time or even earlier i mean they had to actually cut those films and that films uh, and put them together that was that was the uh, earlier method but today's methods are these cuts are all made on the table editing table uh, say in in the computer table itself, there there are softwares to do this, much easier. Sir, and my, I have one question. Yeah. Sir, uh, in the time of Mr. Ray, there was we see, saw that there is um, he doesn't have a proper script. Like he's a more impromptu director. Sir, no, in, it's not an impromptu director. No, he was very planned. It's it, it's wrong to say that he didn't have a proper script. Later, his later films had proper scripts. The earlier films, like Pathar Pachali, it was he didn't have a script, but he had everything drawn. Everything in he, it was in his head. You know, in his mind, yes, sir. Was, every screen was very well planned. I mean, yes, it was sir. not Im impromptu. Impromptu is the wrong word to use uh, in case of uh, Ray, for example. But in uh, in today's era, like directors mostly do proper like i can give you an example of anura kashyap so yeah. he sometimes make films in the pattern of mr ray like not okay. 
uh, like he was not doing a proper scripting, not a proper Reiki. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the improvisation. There are improvisations which which are, uh, I mean, the, of, often used in the, um, you know, I mean, the, the uh, today's filmmakers. They do it. I mean, they don't. Uh, they deviate from uh, from uh, from script. It's not that um, uh, Shotujit has never deviated from his script. He has, but he was a very 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 organized person. I mean, he wouldn't allow. Uh, you know, I mean, the, uh, you know, improvisations, uh, um, unless it is uh, absolutely, uh, I mean, something wonderful or something. I mean, he had uh, his plans. He almost uh, showed the artists, you know, the actors, how to uh, move uh, uh, his face or his hand or everything, not only dialogue. So everything is is, is very planned in case of uh, Ray. But these, impro uh, but today's filmmakers, they all, they, they improvise and uh, they they don't uh, give so much of time making a, a full. Yes, sir. That's my point. That yeah. they don't give proper time. And in Absolutely. the era of Mr. Ray, there is we have there is more and more difficulties. But today we have many things like we can play with colors, we can play with camera angles, and we can play with many things. But the charm that we feel even today in yeah. Mr. Ray's film, we didn't feel in yeah. today's yeah. director's film. That, that's why that's why I mean the difference between a a, 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 a genius and uh, an ordinary filmmaker. You I mean the, they, they, they they may be very skilled. I mean the uh, I mean the the people like Ray or uh, or the or the films like uh, the films of Eisenstein or uh, you know I mean the, or even the uh, you know a Hitchcock. If you go by Hitch, Hitchcock's films, Hitchcock's films were also very very well planned. Hello, sir. I have a question. Yeah, please. Uh, so, by any chance, was Mr. Satyajit Ray inspired by the German expressionism while making Hero Desh and other films? Well, uh, he had a, 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 a realistic uh, a, a strain uh, which came from uh, the uh, the Italian uh, filmmaker, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the Bicycle Thieves and the films like that. Uh, there, there in Europe, there was uh, at that time there was a, uh, um, uh, you know, I mean, the, an influence of uh, of these, uh, uh, you know, I mean, realistic kind of films. I mean, that that has influenced uh, um, uh, Ray definitely. But specifically, whether he was influenced by any German filmmaker, I'm not too not too sure. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir. Good evening, yes. sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, sir, uh, please don't take in that way. I think in that time of the director are working um, in a way that the people will uh, watch this uh, movie and they will love the movie or uh, and remind the movie. But now the director, uh, in my opinion, don't take in that way. In my opinion, the director are making the script and uh, they uh, only in their mind that how much I uh, make arm in this film uh, <laughs> yeah, so in, maybe maybe you're right you're yes right. Sir, that, that was i uh, saying uh, about that you know the economic or the financial uh, aspect is more important than the art aspect the uh, you know i mean making a good film the art aspect is not as important as say uh, making more money the box office yes. you can yes. yes. so in two days era directors are afraid of playing with the art form yeah yeah true true I mean, there is no, uh, I mean, the contradiction between the, uh, you know, I mean, the making good, good, uh, ma making a box office success, uh, uh, box office success, and a, a good film. That that has happened. I mean, in case of uh, Chaplin, for example, even in some of the uh, films of Ray, not the earlier ones, in the best films like Pathir Pachali didn't make film, uh, didn't make money at the at the beginning, but later his films did make money. Some of some of his films were box office hits. But today it's it is different story altogether. But uh, remember, all these uh, you know, I mean, these uh, great characters and f f directors, they have, uh, uh, I mean, uh, used these film languages. Of course, the uh, it depends on the filmmakers today. They all use these languages. You remember, I mean, I've talked about the the illusion of movement, the illusion of sound. So these are things which are. Uh, being used uh, every day by the filmmakers, but how 
or how artistically they are doing it, that is a different story altogether. It, it depends on how you judge and whether you give the right, uh, um, uh, you know, I mean, the um, evaluation for for these filmmakers, whether whether they are good, how you how you assess them to that they are good, whether they have been able to use the film language to to be able to communicate the message. That's also very important. Yes, sir. So I have a little different question from what people are asking. Yes, yes, please. Uh, being a student of psychology, uh, I could relate or find similarities between the topics that you were talking about, like the illusions and the sound and color effect with the uh, gestural, uh, gestural school of psychology, which is basically about uh, all about perception and illusions. Absolutely, yes. So yes. I'm just curious uh, that people in the filmmaking that who are involved, do they yeah. also study the psychology, how the artwork or how their artwork will be perceived by the audience? Yes, you are, uh, you are very right. I mean, uh, the people who, uh, you know, study the aesthetics of uh, uh, color, aesthetics of form, uh, they, they, it, it, I mean, it, it gets all, as you, as you were saying, that it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a study, it's an element of, uh, which has to be studied in, in the classrooms. But these are, uh, I mean, the, the artists, they instinctively understand the Gesalt uh, um, uh, uh, theories. You know, the, especially in the, uh, in the advertising agencies, the people who are making the films, they have to understand uh, the Gesalt theories. So the filmmakers, yes, they do it. I mean, in, there are. I'm, I'm, uh, if you ask them whether did you study uh, Gesalt theory in your classes, uh, uh, many many of the filmmakers today will say no. But uh, you will see that they have incorporated many of the things which 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 you uh, may, uh, want to explain through the theory of Gesalt. Surely. Okay. Thank you, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes, tell me. Yeah, so uh, first of all, thank you for the beautiful presentation. And um, I wanted to ask that uh, how are documentaries made? Like, uh, are they like pre organized or stuff like that? Like, how are they made? Documentaries? Absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, in fact, uh, we are uh, in, in SNU, we are into making a, I mean, we are almost finished making a, a documentary on Indian culture and it started from from the prehistoric uh, times, you know, and Indus Valley civilization to the modern times. And uh, you won't believe the amount of work one had to do. Everything had to be first researched, then uh, uh, prepared, the, uh, you know, a chronology, and then what, uh, what pictures or what visuals will be added, what, uh, uh, you know, dialogue would be there, what will be the, uh, you know, the uh, background music, everything had to be calculated. It's a uh, uh, you know, I mean, the, uh, 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 a total a thirty-minute, uh, thirty-minute uh, uh, film, a uh, uh, documentary, and that uh, has, uh, I mean, it's not yet finally finished. It's, it, it, uh, we are working on it for the last uh, three months or so. So you, you can imagine the amount of effort one has to give. I mean, documentaries are are films which are uh, which need more amount of research and more amount of. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I mean, background material or uh, ma making of a script, and and sometimes in, even the person who sat in in our case also the person you know the technical person who sat for editing, he was asking, uh, he was asking uh, uh, these uh, uh, these uh, short diagrams, meaning these uh, um, uh, the things which are which which I told you are being used by the advertising agencies. You know these. These, um, in fact, I had to tell him that I have made you the script. I've given you the script. I have given you the pictures. Now put it together. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not a shotijitre. Uh, I have not make, made, drawn every scene, everything scene by scene. But ideally, it would have been wonderful. I and mean, uh, the uh, the uh, the editor would demand uh, such, uh, uh, you know, scene by scene uh, drawings. That that is that is important. I mean, we don't do it. But uh, uh, the, ideally, it should have been done. So, uh, you know, I mean, the, uh, the, the documentaries are maybe a different uh, language or a different method. But all the methods that you use for making a fictional film has to be introduced uh, in making a, a documentary film, film also. 
थैंक यू सर ओके there are a couple of questions in the chat box yeah of these questions in the chat box uh, this is from arunava mukherji i think and uh, he says i would like to hear sir's views on the last scene of oshani shonket the way gongacharan shomitra chatterjee's character comes to know about the addition of a member in the family and the last cross fade of shots well uh, that's a difficult question because Uh, i i uh, do remember uh, the shot itself but uh, what is exactly you want to know i mean it's uh, uh, i mean it's it's something is uh, uh, i mean the, uh, it's like uh, uh, i mean the name itself of the film itself uh, tells you i mean that is something which uh, which which is an indication of some something coming in the future that may be uh, i mean a, a positive it may be negative you know that that kind of a uh, i mean the uh, incomplete or a uh, uh, mystery that is uh, that is said in the in the last uh, last scenes of that film yes it is true but i i i'm not too sure uh, i mean i i hope i i uh, i have explained it properly but it is it is a it is a film which uh, i i need to see again to be able to uh, give a proper uh, i mean uh, or the right answer to to your question Yes. Well. Any other questions? Sir, I have a question. Yes, please. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Yes. No, so my question is that sometimes uh, before making the film, the story is fine, the actors are good. editors are well but some still the film doesn't work and i don't mean commercially i mean as a work of art itself yeah. so what is that differentiating factor i'm not talking about box office here. i understand i mean the thing is uh, one if if one has to look back one has to understand that whether uh, the the narration is proper you know i mean the whether the storyline is uh, uh interesting at all i mean whether uh you know i mean the the editing i mean whether i mean you have to look uh, you have to understand that it is a purely an, uh, uh, an illusory world it is uh, you are uh, dealing with things which has to create a story and it may be uh, the editor uh, is is not uh, i mean the, hasn't been able to hold the attention i mean it all everything depends on being able to hold the attention of the of the uh, the uh, of the audience itself so to hold the attention of the audience there are so many things the editor uh, has to be smart i mean there there should not be a a lag in the, uh, in the storytelling part the dialogue has to be uh, making sense you know i mean the, the there there are many many things which have to be the camera the camera work also has to be uh, i mean proper i mean the, it shouldn't be too cluttered i mean it 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 should be visually satisfying so all these things have to be looked into all these uh, the the elements of uh, you can say the language of the film has to be looked into i'm sure there are reasons why um, uh, i mean the, it is not accepted i mean even talk about if if i talk about people like shotijit ray his prophet pachali who, who, which won the gold medal in the Uh, in the uh, in the international uh, film festivals uh, was not liked i mean the the audience people will 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 walked out of the film i mean it, they didn't they didn't understand what was going on it is possible i mean uh, it, it i mean with all the things done so perfectly it may fail initially it may fail uh, to impress but of course i mean as i told you all these elements of uh, narration elements of editing elements of cinematography all these have to make or may be able to hold the attention of the audience that's very important i mean maybe it it, it fails but later maybe for example people understood uh, what patil pachali meant they came back again and that uh, that then uh, uh, i mean the, the the film got got its recognition but initially it didn't people didn't understand what was going on. it happens 
OK, we have time for just one more question. So if there are any other questions, just one more, please. No more. So I had a question. Hello, yes, please. Um, oh, so so who is your current favorite director? Yes, please, louder. Can we know who is your current favorite director? My? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, um, that's a difficult question. I mean, I uh, I do see uh, uh, a lot of, uh, um, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I, whenever I have time, I go into the classics, but sometimes I do see um, a, a, a lot of uh, modern made, um, uh, modern films. Uh, well, uh, uh, I mean, uh, there are lots of, uh, I mean, co controversies regarding, I, I like, uh, uh, you know, Srijit's uh, films today. I mean, I don't know why, uh, he 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 seems to hold the attention of of, of the audience. Sujit is, is a good filmmaker. And sir, what more question? Okay. Yeah. What was uh, the sir, last I movie you saw? So. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, young lady. Carry on. Sir. Yeah. What was your question? You wanted to uh, supplement the question. Uh, so actually, I want you to know who is your current or favorite actor right now. Favorite actor? Well, uh, I mean, uh, from the Bengali, I uh, I like uh, uh, Shashwat. And in Indian cinema, like Bollywood. In Bollywood, uh, mm, well. Uh, uh, I mean, I uh, loved, I mean, I, I forget the name, the person who uh, recently died of cancer. I mean, the, uh, uh, Irfan Khan, Irfan Khan. Irfan, so Irfan Khan. Yeah, Irfan, Irfan Khan. Khan. I, I, I really liked him. I mean, that was one of my very yes, Irfan Khan. Uh, actors. Mine too, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Now, everybody, I'll use my prerogative and uh, say that... In Yes, uh, well, okay. I had I wanted to ask a question. question. Yeah, please allow very uh, much. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I don't know. Thank, thank you so much, sir. Um, so from what I understood from your presentation, uh, mezzosine style of designing is a far more maximalist one, uh, like the one or a dramatic one, like the ones we see in a Wes Anderson movie, for example. Uh, my question is, can mezzosine ever be a minimalistic one? Like a less is more kind of a design? Yes, it depends on, on the uh, uh, you know, filmmaker itself. I mean, it's possible. I mean, it, it can be minimalistic. Why not? I mean, the, uh, it, it has so many, so many uh, ingredients in it. So many ingredients in it. But you can cut. Cut out a lot, lot, uh, lot out of, of the. Uh, uh, somebody's uh, mic is on, uh, and there are a lot of noises coming. So can somebody? Yeah. Yes. So uh, I mean, it depends on the filmmaker. I mean, you can cut down. I mean, there are so many elements that is there in mezzosine. You can cut down uh, of many of them and uh, just keep to the minimal. I mean, it depends on the filmmaker itself. It's possible. Why not? But uh, you can't say that uh, uh, you you can make a film without uh, costumes. You can make a film without, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the environmental, uh, without music. That is a, a, a difficult question. I mean, uh, there, there, there are uh, uh, I mean, essential elements in mesocene which uh, uh, has to be there in the film. It can be, uh, it, it, you may not uh, enlarge upon it. Uh, I mean, but then uh, some of the things will, will have to be there in, in, in filmmaking. Uh, so okay, could you give an example? Yeah. Such. A, would you give um, an example of such a film, like with minimalistic style of mezzosine? Like. Uh. Well. Uh, I at this moment I don't remember uh, a minimalistic uh, um, uh, mezzosine. Maybe um, uh, many of the uh, the Hitchcock films are. Uh, I mean, are a very bare. I mean, bare minimum. I mean, it's just, just, uh, uh, just camera, uh, you know, and just acting. Uh, very, very little of uh, other things. 
uh, Hitchcock's films are uh, Mizosin is much less. Okay, everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you very yeah. much. It's been an amazing session. Amazing because Professor Burushit Dashkukto gave us uh, in a very brief span of time, a little over one hour, and an extended question and answer session. He gave us information that is new to many of us and information that enriched us in many different ways. So, sir, may I say that the School of Languages, International Languages of uh, Sister Nivedita University is doffing its hat to you for being with us and giving a presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, we will be uh, hearing you and seeing you either online or offline because we have many other future uh, <laughs> that we would like you to involve. Sure, sure. If you sure. could give us I mean, a little I, bit of your time, I know you. Sure, sure, I will. Sure, I will. That's, this, is, uh, this particular department is uh, to my heart. Many of the things which I uh, love to uh, follow or love to, and certainly your uh, subjects are something which yes, are uh, part of my interest, areas of interest. So definitely I will, uh, I'll be there again to be part of Thank your you. programs. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Now, so there much. are several other persons that I have to thank before I bring this uh, meeting to a close. The first, is, of course, is our Chancellor, uh, uh, Shottam Rai uh, because, you know, the School of International Languages is essentially his brainchild and something which is very close to his heart. And I'm sure he's going to be very happy to learn that we had almost uh, over a uh, well over 400 participants today listening into Professor Das Gupta's talk. I don't. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> it's a combination of a marvelous speaker and a fascinating subject. You can do wonders. So thank you. The other persons I have to thank, of course, is our Vice Chancellor, Professor Dhruva Jyoti Chattopadhyay, for helping us or allowing us to hold this program, and our registrar, Professor Shumon Chatterjee, who's been an enthusiastic uh, support in SNU SIL, School of International Languages. So once again, goodbye and good night to all of you. Keep very well and keep watching. <laughs> they say for other programs of SIL, and we'll have a to back in to perform for us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you. everybody. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. 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 Yes, good. Sorry. Uh, as I was saying, uh, this recording is going to be preserved in the archives of the School of International Languages of Sister Nivedita University. So those of you who would like to go back to it once again to learn, to understand, to appreciate, do get in touch with us if you want it, access to it in future. And finally, everyone, please leave because this is a Teams platform that we are using. And if you don't leave, then the Teams platform will go on for another several hours. And most importantly, the record traumatized or traumatized, let's say. So everyone, please leave one by one. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Was a very good. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.
Mahek Shaw and Borita Mukherjee, please leave. Mahek Shaw and Borita Mukherjee, please leave. Borita Mukherjee and Mahek Shaw, please leave the team's meeting. এই মাহেক স বলে শোনো আরে শোনো মাহেক স বলে একজন বেরোচ্ছে না মিটিং থেকে কি করব মাহেক স গেস্ট মাহেক কি করব আমি তো চেঁচিয়ে চেঁচিয়ে বলছি তাও শুনছে না 
পিতা মুখার্জি বলে একটা মেয়ে সেটাকে বলে ওকে মানে দশ বার আমি রিপিট করছি আমি বোধ ঠিক আছে 